I'm first going to ask you about, you know, the most recent thing, your, your injury. Can you explain, you know, what happened? Yeah, so, I mean, a month ago I was in practice, kind of felt like some discomfort in my foot. Talked to my trainer, Serge, who's a great trainer. He always takes care of us. And I thought it was the tape at first, so I kept cutting the tape a little bit because I thought it was just like cutting the blood circulation off of my foot or whatever. Uh, we went over to Viejas, I jumped for a rebound, came down, landed normally, but it felt a little awkward. And as the practice kept going, you know, I kept running, kept competing, and then eventually I just wasn't able to continue uh, practice. So I had to get out or sit out and then just talk to Serge. And from there, we, you know, just tried to figure out what it was. What have they diagnosed you with? Uh, just a stress fracture in my right foot, yeah. How hard is that, you know, having to go through this in, in your senior season? It's, it was frustrating, you know, for me now, I've kind of been at peace with it and tried to find the joy outside of it. So, like, whether that's, you know, playing with my dogs, not playing literally, but, like, just being around them and interacting with them uh, to read my Bible more and just going deep into my faith or talking to my family and my loved ones. Just trying to find things outside to distract me from the fact that I'm injured or whatever, but also coming to terms with it and being okay with, you know, what happened. How long of a timeline did they give you till you can return? I should be good to start a little bit, like ramping up a little bit or moving around like six, seven weeks from now, but it all really just depends on how my uh, foot heals. What helped you come to terms with it? Yeah, I know you said your Bible and I'm sure that religion yeah. helps with some of that stuff, but just to encapsulate what all has kind of helped you be like, this is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I've always been somebody that no matter what the situation is, like, you can't change it. You know, if something happens, you got to push forward. Uh, but for me, honestly, it, it took for me to really express how I felt, you know, to my loved ones and the people around me and express, like, how I'm feeling about it, you know, what my goals are and everything, and just get it out more than just holding it in. You know, I think I've been taught as I've been growing up to kind of, like, hold my emotion and not speak about it. And in some instances, it's understandable, but when it's something where, you know, I won't be able to play basketball for a minute, I'll have to kind of sit down and just reflect. It, it made it easier to talk and just let it out and then just be able to come to terms with the injury and understand, like, regardless of how I feel, if I'm sad or happy, it's going to take a certain amount of time to heal and just accept that and just be okay with it and just push forward and, you know, help the team with being a vocal leader and just helping everybody out in that way. I'm sure basketball obviously means a lot to you. So how relieving, I guess, was it to maybe lay off this huge tension that had been, you know, going on in your life? I would say playing, it sucks that I'm not playing. The relief part is more because I was waiting for two weeks or a week and a half to kind of like figure out what the injury was. You know, and now figuring out what it was, I can ease my mind because I know what it is. I know around when I should be coming back. So at this point, you know, all my focus has been towards school, you know, talking to my loved ones, and then obviously rehabbing and just getting back and just staying on top of it. What perspective do you feel like you'll have when you do be it, when you're able to return to playing basketball? I mean, I have the last time I was really hurt, I had a um, groin surgery, so I was out for about a month or two. When was that? Uh, that was two years ago, uh, but that was in the off season, so I came back. I was ready for season. This time is different because I'm not playing in the beginning. Like I'm going to miss some of the season. Everybody's going to be going, and I'm, in a way, I'm going to be having to catch up. Um, but I'm definitely not going to take it for granted. You know, now, you know, as human beings, we think everything's given to us and that regardless, we're going to have to do something until you can't do it anymore. And then you look back and you're like, you know, you can't do it or dang, I wish I hadn't taken it for granted. So definitely just loving the time that I have while I'm on the court. Uh, and just loving the process of going into it even more than I already did before. A lot of people, it takes them a lot of time to gain, I guess, like the deep thought that I can kind of sense that you have about a lot of stuff. How do, where do you feel like you get that? Do you read philosophy? Is it just religion? Is it something your parents taught you? Like, where, where do you feel like you kind of gain that perspective of it is what it is and, you know, this is the path I've been given and this is how I, you know, go about a healthy way of, of rationing what's, what's going on? Yeah, well, of course my parents. You know, my stepdad or my, I call him my pop, so him, you know, my mom, my sister, they've all kind of always been like, it happened with any situation in life, like you're going to have to get through it. But I think for me, it's more of my religious beliefs and being a child of God. I'm a Christian, so, you know, with me, I can't be so uptight and, you know, blame somebody for something that happened to me and just understand my path is different than somebody else's. And 
I'll be blessed in the ways that I'm blessed, and there'll be times where there's a setback, but it's always for the better, and just trusting and believing in that. When you lose time like you have, what do you feel like your mentality will be when you return and you're playing games again? Yeah, for me, my mentality is always going to be I have to kill who's on the other team. Uh, that's just how I was raised. That's just how I am. And I think it's even more exciting for me because I get to really be challenged in a way that most other players wouldn't be challenged in, where you're coming in, not playing anything, and you're thrown right into the fire. You know, in terms of being an older guy and coming off of an injury. You know, so for me, I look forward to it. I always look forward to the challenge, and I think that's what makes me who I am. I'm ready for anything, and I don't want to be looked at as always just coming back. If I'm on the court, I want to be treated as if I've been playing for a while. So if it's criticism, if it's praise, whatever it is, I want to be treated as if I've been playing, and if I'm out there, I'm going to give my 110%. Coming into this season, you were anticipated to be one of the better players in the conference with the preseason honors that you received. When you get onto the court, how will you facilitate that, and what do you feel like your role will be having the expectations that have been put on you? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, I'm thankful. You know, I've been chosen as one of the preseason, you know, players or whatever, but at the same time, I've had people have expectations of me and what they thought, you know, I would be or what they thought I should do. And at the end of the day, I can't really focus on it, you know, especially with my injury. I have to focus on just coming back and being ready. For me, of course, the end goal, I want to play in the league. Uh, but right now, with my injury, I'm just focused on getting better. My expectation for me is just coming back and just being the best player I can be. Um, I think I'll still be the same player I was going to be coming into the season with my experience and the way I think the game, how I watch film, how I practice, how I work out. I think I'll still be a great player. And, you know, in my eyes, I'm still the best player in the league. So I don't really look at it any differently now that I'm injured. It just gives me more of a fire under me and a target on my back to come back and be better. What gives you the confidence to say, I am the best player in the league? Yeah, you know, there's so many talented players like Dagan Hart. Yeah. Why does Reese Waters feel like he's the best player in the league? I mean, honestly, I feel like I've put in too much work to be anything short of that. You know, from when I was younger up until now, I've always been and always will outwork whoever's, you know, in front of me and next to me. And it ain't from a selfish standpoint, but selfishly, I'm I'm confident in myself. You know, I can't be more confident in somebody else than me because it's going to throw off my game. And I feel like, you know, especially like I spoke about earlier in my faith, you know, I feel like everybody's given a talent, everybody's given a gift, you know, and I feel like, you know, I'm favored in a way. You know, it's, it could be a good thing and a bad thing, but with me, I've, I've put in way too much work to not be the best player. And that's just my opinion. What makes you most excited about all the work that you've put in to get to this point? and then what's coming up next to where you want to go? I mean, really just playing with all the guys I played with over the summer. You know, we've been playing for a good minute. We were beating up on each other all the time. So I was definitely looking forward to the scrimmage because it was going to be the first time we played against another team. But unfortunately, I got hurt. But I'm definitely looking forward to playing with the younger guys, whether it's Taj, Goon, Farrell, BJ, Miles, Heidi, all the newcomers too, like especially with Berg coming back. Like I was really excited. Um, but I, I try not to think about it because it's, Right now, I can't play, so but I'm definitely excited to play with them, for sure. How good do you think Farrell Compton can be? I mean, me personally, I feel like Farrell Compton can be pretty, pretty, like, really good. Um, he, and he's working in the right direction. He's listening. He's trying his best. You know, he's a freshman, so he has moments where he may be upset with himself or somebody else, and that's normal. We're all human, but he could be really, really good. I definitely think he could play in the NBA. He can go as, as high as he wants to go. It just depends on him. I'll ask you a couple of lighthearted more questions now. Uh, do you have a special talent that people may not know about you? I wouldn't even say like a talent, but something that I'm good at that I don't do often is trash talking. I could say that. I don't really do it as much. I'll, I'll say that. I'll say trash talking. What's your best example of something that you've done trash talking wise on the court? What's something somebody said to you and you chirp back to them? Man, I'm trying to keep it PG. Um, there was a player last year on a particular team, and it was one of the games. I'm not gonna say right who. Right, they good. I'm not. I'm not gonna say who. It was a good. It was a good. I had a pretty good game. And he was on the bench, and he he was just in for a certain amount of game. He was talking wild. He came out, and I was in the corner. He was talking trash, and I was like, "Bro, you weren't even on the scouting report." And I just left it at that. And he he didn't say nothing the rest of the game.
So that, I mean, that was clever, but like, I can't really say any of the other stuff. <laughs> How excited are you for the season, man? Super excited, you know, I mean, third year. Uh, I'm a sophomore still, but third year. Um, you know, a lot of new faces, but you know, the same excitement every single year, being able to play basketball at the school you love. Going into your third year, how do you feel like you've kind of acclimated to this? Maybe take on more of a leadership role? Uh, you know, being the guy that's played the most games in an Aztec jersey, I think I just got to keep the standard the standard. Uh, you know, I'm one of the guys that's been here and knows what we do defensively, offensively, how we carry ourselves on and off the court. So, you know, trying to just keep that and teach the new guys the same thing. How much does the coaching staff lean on you when it comes to some of that stuff you were just talking about? Uh, definitely a good amount. You know, I, I get screamed at a good amount for, for mistakes and stuff like that. But, you know, that's what happens when they, when they expect a lot from you. And uh, I understand that. So, you know, I never really listen to tone. I just listen for the message. So, uh, yeah, no, I, start, I do a lot of our drills. I'm the first one to do the drills just so I could kind of set the tone. How much does that take? for you to meet the expectation, to meet the standard, and kind of be the guy who leads the way? You know, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely a new experience, especially at this level. Um, but I mean, I was sat behind so many great guys who did the same thing, like Keisha Johnson, Agueca Rope. So, you know, I was able to learn from those guys and how to carry myself as a leader. When your time came, how did you accept it? And how did you go about doing it in your way? Uh, it was more of just like, finally, like, I waited so long, I put in so much work for this, so I'm, I'm glad that I'm now I have an opportunity to, to, you know, step up into a bigger role. So you wanted that? Yeah, definitely, 1,000%. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very talkative person, good spirits all the time, so, you know, being a vocal leader isn't very too hard for me. It's just more, you know, making sure that my, uh, my habits are good and, you know, I'm leading by example, too. What do you feel like the expectation for this team will be last year, uh, Sweet 16, the year Ooh. prior to that, national championship run We're trying to get to the national championship every year. Every single, every single July 5th, July 1st we started this year, our main goal is national champions. So, I mean, that's, a, that's the same thing I think our team could do this year. I think that's our ceiling. Why do you feel like this team can make it that far? Uh, just the way we work. Um, you know, we're a lot younger than we normally are with a lot less experience, but you know, the way we work in and out, uh, come in every day and push each other, I think it'll only benefit us in the long run by, by March. A little adversity early on in the season with mm -hmm. Reese's injury. How do you guys navigate through that and maybe elevate your game a little more to help? You, uh, you know, we, uh, it sucks that Reese's out, but we got to do the next man up mentality. We got young guys who haven't played a lot of college basketball, and, you know, it's a perfect opportunity for Reese to be on the side and kind of coach some young guys up as well. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think... Once he's back, everybody will already be in the flow of things because some people are going to have to step up and take on bigger roles. So I think that'll help our team out in the long run. Non-conference schedule is going to be really, really tough, tough this year. Yeah. Uh, you guys got like teams like Gonzaga mm -hmm. coming here, and you guys got Creighton on the schedule, I believe, mm -hmm. as well. How tough will that be, and what do you feel like you'll learn out of it? Uh, you know, those are the games that really get you ready for March. You know, uh, looking back at it, we had the Maui Invitational. Uh, my freshman year and we ended up going to the national championship that year and it's just because we played good teams early in the year and you know we might have lost two games we lost a game we probably shouldn't have but you have to sometimes take those bumps and bruises early on so you could learn as a team. How exciting is that to know that you guys have games that will get you Super ready exciting. for the for the talent Super that you've seen more? I love, I love I love playing against good teams no matter what so the better competition the better I am. How good can Pharaoh Compton be? Oh, he's going to be a, a problem. He, he's a guy that every single time he touches the ball, he's going to touch that rim. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the funnier things. Uh, you know, do you have a special talent that people may not know about you? Um, I would say I could sing, but I would be lying. <laughs> uh, you know, I like to try to sing, but I definitely can't. My talent is just bringing a smile to people's faces. Try to, try to make everybody smile, right? make sure everyone's having a good day. How excited are you for, for this season? Very excited, very excited. You know, put a lot of work in. We've been waiting, waiting my time. It's time to come. Your last season, you had that injury and then really didn't play. Uh, to be able to step on the court this year, what do you hope your role to be and how do you hope to contribute? Uh, you know, I just hope to go out there and uh, have fun, you know, after not being able to play for a long time. And hopefully I can do, do my all, give my all to help the team win in whatever way, whatever way I can. What did you feel like you learned the most, just kind of, you know, hanging on the bench a little bit and maybe like kind of seeing, you know, what, what was going on on the court? 
Uh, you know, I just I got to learn like a bunch of little things, like how important communication is, the physicality of the games, like practicing against Jaden Ladee, how fast the game was. And I feel like uh, that year was very beneficial for me. Seven feet tall. That's the thing that a lot of people, you know, talk about when they talk about you, just your height and your length. And I'm sure that makes a lot of ability to, to create chances for you inside the post scoring and also on, on defense. What do you, how do you feel like your height and your wingspan and all that is, is a weapon to your game? Oh, no, I, def, I definitely try to use a lot of, utilize it as, as much as I can, you know, on the defensive end, try to stay long, saying to fill up those gaps, <clears throat> protect the rim. And offensively in the post, you know, try to get to my spots, rise and finish above people. Everyone, you know, these days uh, don't really see seven footers as guys that just sit in the post, which is what it used to be. And you're one of those guys that's a little more versatile. I know we were talking before that. Kevin Durant's uh, your guy that you look up to. How did you model your game kind of more like his and, and what he does to give you this versatility to move around on the court, shoot threes, whatever, whatever that might be? Uh, you know, as a kid, like, I've always watched him growing up. Like, I would just watch his highlights, and I would go out, uh, <clears throat> go out, play pickup, and would just, like, play, like, similar style, try not, like, try to mimic some of his moves. What do you hope this team accomplishes this year? Obviously, they've had so much success over the last couple of years with the Final Four National Championship appearance and then uh, also making it to the Sweet 16 even last year. What do you hope? the success of this team this year will be? Uh, hopefully this, uh, this year we can win conference um, and also make a big run in March. That's a, that's a, that'd be great. You just transferred here. Uh, kind of walk me through, you know, what went through your decision to, to come from USD over here? Um, it was just, I just felt like the right transition, you know, staying, being from San Diego, uh, playing at Coronado, coming to USD, and then from my final year being at uh, San Diego State just felt like the right space to be. You know, I still have my backyard, my family here, uh, friends, and uh, everyone who supports me. Uh, it's a big program. <clears throat> Somewhere I really uh, always looked at as a, a space that where I need to be. The program has always been something I wanted to be a part of. You know, just the intensity, the uh, the ability to. Uh, they work hard, like every day. I've seen it. I've worked with guys on the team from the past. I've seen their their fight, their grit, and it's just something that I've always wanted to, you know, be a part of to help win. Was that kind of a goal, on being from this area, that you wanted to play for San Diego State one day? Yeah, absolutely. And I really started my junior year when I first got here. So 2019, I'd, I'd seen um, I'd seen guys. I'd started training with guys. Um, uh, more specifically Lamont Butler and I saw how hard he worked and I saw uh, how he was able to bring what he had to the table and I knew that one day I wanted to be able to uh, to really help win to be able to win be in a winning position be on a team with a, such a good fan base uh, great staff and be able to uh, just grind out every summer and get better improved to give myself the chance to make it far. A lot of people, you know, want to achieve their dream. Why do you feel like you were able to achieve your dream, and why did you want this so badly? Um, I feel like I was able to achieve my dream as soon as I signed to USD freshman year. But this was just another stepping stone. Coming here is just uh, a program that's very high and high level. Uh, you know, seeing a team go to the national championship, the final four, and all that stuff, it, it's really uh, only a kick and dream, you know, going somewhere that far. But I said, it doesn't come from nothing. You know, the guys didn't just uh, wake up one day and just say, oh, we're just going to win and go to the Final Four. No, it came in the off season, whether it was with the training, what they do uh, with their bodies, what they do with uh, mentally, all that stuff. And just seeing the team be able to come together and just uh, grind it out and, and just win like that, it was, it was absolutely, like, a great sight to see. So that helped me be able to be... Um, who I am, whether it's defensively, offensively, and just being able to be a team player and win. How much does that resonate? You, you talked about, you know, the grinding it out and putting in the work with who Wayne McKinney is. Uh, it resonates a lot. Uh, through my life, I've been uh, such a hard worker. I've worked hard to be where I am um, off the court. And then on the court, I've just flourished and I've been myself, and that's gotten me where I am today. Um, whether it was the long, long mornings, late nights in the classroom, uh, making sure I had the greatest grades possible, um, all that stuff really mattered in order to be the player I am. Tell me about what it was like growing up playing San Diego basketball and then, you know, 
getting to do that through college? Yeah. Um, so junior year when I got here, um, it was a lot different. So I'm coming from Portland, Oregon. Uh, the shot clock's a lot faster paced basketball. I had to get used to a lot of different things. So uh, finally getting to college, uh, it was it was uh, it was kind of a you know it was a shaker. I was a, I was kind of surprised coming in as a freshman. You know, college is a lot different, bigger bodies, uh, different defenses, uh, a lot of bigger guys. It's harder to score a little bit. You know, you got to work a little bit, a lot harder actually to just be uh, a solid player. So I knew that. For me, being a smaller guard, it just whatever it took. And every day, you know, speaking to coaches, every day speaking to my family, just always uh, seeing where I am the day before and the next day always mattered. And that day, like the work I put in that day, always mattered. And you can't worry about what you did yesterday because that doesn't matter. It's what you, how you can get better today. And that was always the mentality I took, how I approached it every day. The school has had a lot of success over the last two years. As you mentioned earlier, the Final Four and then the National Championship, and then last year even making it to the Sweet 16. To be at a program like that and to hold that expectation, what does this team need to do? We just need to stay together as a team. Um, you know, we have a young team, but we've already seen guys uh, take roles that, you know, it's, it's been a really quick transition and it's been really great to see. Uh, we have guys who can just go at it and score. We have guys who can play really good defense, go get on the glass, get rebounds, uh, all that stuff. We have everything that a team needs to go far. It's just about staying together, staying connected, and putting good team chemistry together. And as long as we stay together, our coaches are always going to put a, uh, put together a good game plan for us, and we're always going to work hard. Uh, that's always going to matter. But come game time and in the end when uh, adversity strikes, it always matters to who's going to come down and be the team to lock in and stay together for those last few minutes. And I think we have what it takes to win. And all the little things matter. And we're going to be able to do that. You mentioned adversity strikes. Uh, the news came out recently that Reese Waters, uh, you know, hurt his foot and is going to be out for some time. How do you as teammates, you know, pick up maybe, you know, some of, I don't want to say slack, but, you know, he's a guy that's projected to be on the all-conference team. How do you guys rise to the occasion to overcome that early season adversity? So everybody's already stepped up. Uh, the level in practice has been at one of the highest levels it's been. Uh, everybody understands that we all got to, you know, help out and pick up and be better because you know that's a that's a really important piece to our team but we know that it can't hurt us and affect us that much because we all still have each other and we still have a great team and obviously we we love reese and reese is a uh, really helpful for us but we all know we if we step up and we can we can fulfill those wins and we can stay together and get the w's that we need especially when he comes back and everything will come together perfectly and it will be a really great team you know, you, you have some familiarity but having played at USD, playing teams like Gonzaga, but, you know, the non-conference is going to be, you know, a lot of really tough teams for, for San Diego State. How excited, you know, are you for the challenge to play teams like Gonzaga, Creighton, and the non-conference before you get into conference play? I, I definitely think it'll be great for us. It's great for me as well. Uh, we've already seen how good our team is, uh, you know, scrimmaging other teams, and we, we're just ready. We're ready to step on that floor and give it all we have and shock the world. That's been our, that's been our main thing. Um, not many people have seen us to be uh, one of the greater teams from the last couple of years, but I think I've seen a lot of progression with this team. I've seen a lot of us uh, step up and do little things that matter to help us. And it's gonna be really great to see, and I'm really excited for us to show it. All right, a couple funnier questions for you. What's a secret talent people may not know about you? I'm a singer and a dancer. I'm really, yeah, those are my two. Not many people know. Maybe a little bit quiet people might know it because my TikTok, maybe, but singer, no, I don't think anybody really knows that. What do you like to sing? R&B, uh, soul, all that little stuff, you know, those are my favorites. Can you give us a little taste? Nah, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> nah, nah, okay. nah, nah, not on TV, nah, I'm okay, hell okay. Who's the funniest guy on the team and why? Ooh, funniest guy on the team? I'd have to say it's a two-way tie between um, Farrell Compton and Magoo. Um, the reasons I say this, they're just goofy and they just do, do things that make you crack up and start laughing. Um, Farrell is just, you know, he's just hilarious. Like those guys, they're, they're so young and they have all the little jokes and stuff and it's perfect timing. So yeah, definitely those two. How excited are you for this upcoming season? Oh man, I'm ecstatic, you know, just put a lot of work in and just ready to get out there and play. 
a lot of the stuff that's going on right now is Reese just got injured and you guys are trying to, you know, maybe elevate a little more to, I don't want to say pick up the slack of, of him not being there, but, you know, to just kind of elevate the game to, to kind of make the team go. How do you feel like that's been happening at practice and, you know, how are things kind of, you know, adjusting after everything that's happened? Um, I think, you know, people are stepping up and obviously with him out, we're going to have to, like you said, kind of pick it up a little from what he brings. So until he gets healthy, guys are just going to have to step up and keep learning and keep growing. And hopefully he'll be able to come back quick and provide what he, uh, what he brings to the team. What do you feel like the biggest strengths of this team are this season? I definitely just say our grit and our toughness and our resilience. You know, when things don't go our way, we can still be able to go out there and just keep playing. So that's a big factor. How would you describe your game personally? Uh, personally, I would say I'm an energy guy. You know, I could try to go out there and just play as hard as I can and let that do all the, you know, talking for me. So, What gets you most excited on the basketball court? Uh, definitely seeing, you know, my teammates do their thing. When I see them, you know, get buckets out there, it gives me confidence and brings me joy. Do you have a favorite thing? Like, is it like a lob up to them or is it just like them hitting a big shot? What, yeah. what is it? Uh, I would, I'd definitely say like a three when I pass it to them and they get a three from that, it's no better feeling, so. There's been a lot of high expectations on San Diego State, especially just a couple years ago. There was that Final Four run of the National Championship and last year making it to the Sweet 16. How do you make sure that success, you know, stays about to where San Diego State's making a deep run in the NCAA tournament pretty much every year? Uh, well, you know, I've seen what it takes to get there from the guys in front of me, so just implementing their habits and really working hard and making sure the goals stays alive, so. Just doing that day in and day out and staying true and buying into that. So, Does Coach Dutcher ever talk about expectation and meeting expectation or how does he go about the philosophy of how you guys attain success? There's definitely expectation and you know he holds us to a high standard so we have to go out there work hard and trust our process and that's what he expects is our effort to be there 100 percent and which it will be. What do you feel like you resonate most with what this coaching staff pretty much preaches to you guys? Um, I would definitely have to say that how they preach about defense and rebounding. I definitely agree that that side of the game is where championships are won. And so just really with them being focused on that and me being the player I am, it just, it goes together. A lot of people are excited for Farrow Compton to take the court this year. What have you seen out of him and how good do you think he can be? Oh, his potential is limitless. You know, he's a great athlete and so He's going to keep working, and once he gets more comfortable, it's only going to get scarier from there. But he's starting off great so far, and it's been fun to see. Tell me about your love of the game of basketball, how it started, and you know how it's got to do to where you are today. Man, you know, it's one of those things that kind of just happened. Uh, I didn't really have to choose it. Uh, my parents, you know, showed it to me at a young age, and from there, I kind of just fell in love with it. You know, I love the... I love the fact that when you're doing it, that's all you're focused on. You don't really, you're not really stressed about nothing else and all the other worldly stuff just goes out and it's just you and the ball and the game. Cool. How excited are you for the season, man? Um, you know, I'm pretty excited. You know, I feel like there's a lot of been a lot of work going on, putting up leading towards this. You know, all the practicing in the summertime, just come down to this. Everyone that I pretty much talked to today, I asked them how good they think you can be, and everyone's just like limitless ceiling through the roof. Everyone thinks that you can be so good. What do you feel like your ceiling is? Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I'll say that. And I think, yeah, as hard as I want to play every time, I think that'll just determine as good as I can be. And there's definitely some things I need to uh, work on, but as long as I'm aware of everything I need to you know, improve on, I think I can be pretty well. The expectation already put on you as freshman of the year in the Mountain West Conference. How do you take that expectation and how do you move forward with it? Um, I just look at it um, as, a, as, a, as another goal I've set for myself. And, you know, it's just something I have to go out there and do now. Um, I have to perform every game and make sure I'm the hardest player for, you know, as long as I'm in the game, every time I get to step foot on the court. I'm sure there's been a lot of expectations put on you throughout your, your entire life as, as the game of basketball goes. How did you deal with them then and how do you feel like you deal with them now? Yeah, um, people always say like there's like sort of pressure, but you know, I don't see any pressure. You know, it's just something that as, if, you put in, if you put in the work, man, you'll have no doubts, no disbelief. You know, you'll be able to go back on that work you put in and they'll just 
everything people are saying about you and everything, it doesn't matter, you know. You know what you're uh, capable of and you'll, you can go show that. There's a lot of hype around you. How would you explain your game to people that are getting ready to see you on the basketball court? Um, I'm definitely an energetic player. You know, I like to um, talk on both sides of the floor. I like to bring, you know, I like to bring the, um, all the people in the post, you know. You'll, you'll be able to see it. Every time I get the ball, everybody likes to come towards me, but I'm definitely going to be dunking on some people, you know, you know, talking crap a little bit. But, you know, I like to be really aggressive on the court no matter where it is. You like to dunk on people and talk crap, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, I try to, that's what I try to aim for, but I try to keep it, you know, keep it cool down. But I think, I think it'll be good while I'm playing in VA house, and hopefully the fans will like it too. How good would you say you are at trash talking? Um, you know, there's only, you know, some, uh, so much I can say about that. But I think I'm actually pretty good at it. I like to get into people's heads, you know, I like to take a different approach. It's not about like it's not about how you say something. I feel like it's what you say, like what you're saying to somebody. So I think it's all like, it's all another game in the game. But I'm, I'm pretty well. I'm pretty well good at it. Is there a PG story you can tell us of some trash talking you've done recently? Um, man, I, I can tell you a little something funny. Yeah, um, like we have a group chat with um, younger players, me, BJ, Goon, Tosh, and I was early in the day. I woke up before class. I'm just. I was sending a video to them. I'm like, hey, I think I'm going to dunk on one of you guys today in practice, man. You know, I'm sorry in advance. You know, I just think I'm going to dunk on somebody. And the practice came, and I dunked on Goon that day. And it was just, it was just funny because we were just talking about it before. And I just like to, you know, just, I just think it's something like I'll go back on. Like, hey, I told you I was going to dunk on you. So after I dunked on it, it was just, it was all yelling and screaming from me. He sounds a tall. Yeah, it was it was it was tough. I didn't think I I was gonna be able to do it, but I, I ended up putting him in the rim. But I haven't been able to since then. You know, he he does block a lot of my shots, and he is a great rim protector though. So when I did get him, I was like, I told you, I didn't think I was gonna do, but yeah, I told you so. How fun is it to be with this team now, and you know, be a part of college basketball? Oh, well, you know, it is it is a difference for sure. You know, this is like a brotherhood. You're gonna have to get through your differences, and you got to figure them out, you know, quickly. So I think it's been good being able to, you know, talk to all these guys, you know, hang out, hang out with them on and off the floor, get to know them as, as just people, you know, that'll help us, you know, play, play better, you know, be connected. So it's, it's definitely been really fun. Have some of the older guys been kind of like that teacher leadership role type deal to you, and how has that helped you maybe grow your game since you, you started at the college level? Um, yeah, I've had, I had um, some people, you know, definitely like take me under the wing, like some coaches like AG former player, but he's a coach now. He likes to, you know, mentor me and uh, Jared as well, transfer big man. Uh, he likes to, you know, stay on me during practice. You know, we got to be competitive every day, but he knows how good I can be. So he makes sure that he, um, you know, he's on me all the time. And, you know, a lot of the players do too, Nick. I mean, I feel like I can just keep going down the line. Everybody is trying to just push me to the best of my abilities. Some quick funny things, I'll let you go. Do you have a secret talent of any sort? Um, Secret talent. I can whistle. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, I think I need this. Oh, another talent, a different talent of mine. I think it's definitely better than that. I can, I can dance though. Can you dance? Yeah. How good? I'm actually a pretty good dancer. I'm a dancer on TikTok. I'll be on You're TikTok a, dancer on a TikTok? lot. Yeah, I yeah. I hear Wayne dances on TikTok. You guys ever? Yeah, do me that? and Wayne, me and Wayne, be making TikTok sometimes in the locker room after practice. Yeah, we, I can, we definitely do that.